It is a veteran's voice that commands the highest level of dignity and respect. Major General James Whitehead has lived in Bakersfield for the last 25 years, following an impressive military career that encompassed more than 40 years of flight all over the globe. He was on a mission to reach great heights that had plenty of turbulence along the way. I always loved airplanes. From eight years old, I wanted to fly airplanes. I made every model you could think of. So at the age of 17, James T. Whitehead joined the Army National Guard. We were standing on the corner. They say, you know, they go up the armory once a week, and then they ride on tanks, and they shoot, and they get paid to do it. And we said, we're standing on the corner here. What are we waiting for? So that lasted a year. He then took off for the University of Illinois to pursue his love of planes and become an airline pilot. He passed his professional pilot's course, got his license, when his dream was suddenly grounded. My instructor said, uh, Jim, have you checked to see if the airlines will hire you? I said, not really. He said, I think you better check before you waste any more of your money. And they weren't hiring any blacks. So I said, okay. Go to the Air Force. But what a decision it turned out to be. Whitehead graduated college and went to flight school with dreams of flying fighter jets. But what the military needed at the time was pilots for bigger aircraft. So I said, hey, 135, we're only second class to get them, brand new. Why not? I'd rather be on the right seat than the back seat. He flew on alert in the KC-135 for six years from bases here in the U.S. and overseas. The horn goes, you run to the airplane because you never know if it's real or it's an exercise. You don't know till you get in the airplane, you proceed like it's real until you get a message, then you know. His crew was part of Operation Chrome Dome during the Cold War, as B-52 bombers were flying constantly around the world, and his crew would meet up with them to refuel, to keep them in the air. The 52s would head towards Russia, nukes on board, ready to go all the way, and they had to get a message to continue. No message, they turn around. Whitehead was deployed during Vietnam, and when he returned home in 1965, his career climbed to new heights. Volunteer for U-2s. He was accepted into the program and moved to davis Monthan Air Force Base in Tucson to begin training in the first model of the U-2 spy plane, nothing like anything he experienced before. Two weeks ground school. Uh, we didn't have any simulator. Every aspect of flying the U-2 was tedious. Believe it or not, in low altitude, it was a tank. <laughs> it was a flying tank. You had a wheel. It felt like a tank. And once you reached altitude, the difference between flying and stalling was razor thin. We fly in coffin corner. That's about six to eight knots between high speed and low speed stall. In 1966, Whitehead, the first African-American U-2 pilot and only the 129th to achieve combat ready status at the time, flew missions over Cuba and elsewhere. And the enemy knew he was there. You know when they lock on and you know when they fire. They lock on and something they never fired at me. Soon after, Whitehead resigned his commission and he was finally hired to fly commercial aircraft. Uh, TWA hired me. Let's see, I was the second African-American hired by TWA. How long did you fly for TWA? 20 years. It was then he also rejoined the military with the Nebraska Air National Guard, and his career really skyrocketed, climbing through the ranks over the year to become a two-star general in 1991 as the assistant director of the Air National Guard assigned to the Pentagon. His only regret was moving his family so many times in the early days during a turbulent moment in our nation's history. Like when I was in Louisiana, when I went off base, I had a drink out of a colored water fountain. I had to sit in the back of the bus. But yet I could go to the best store there. They took my money. And some of the support I didn't get from the military. Mm -hmm. That probably was the thing that hurt the most. But Whitehead said he had great support from mentors and advice from his father. If you work as hard as a white person, you won't make it. You work twice as hard, maybe you will. If you really want to be a success, You've got to work three times as hard. He moved to Bakersfield with his wife Sandra in 1993 with an album full of achievements and honors. And one of his many commands over the last 24 years included chairman of the board at the Minterfield Air Museum in Shafter. I think people need to know Kern County was very special in aviation. It still is in military. The U-2 exhibit showcases Kern County's tie to the secret surveillance program. In 1999, declassified documents revealed a production facility to build the spy plane on Norris Road in Oildale. Put together in a humble tin roof warehouse known simply as Unit 80. The plane was then boxed up and shipped out. 
So you've been to Area 51? Yes and no. <laughs> now, after a quarter century in Kern County, Whitehead's preparing to take off again, returning to a community outside Tucson, a place where his life truly soared in a job he was born to do. I loved what I did. I've always wanted to fly airplanes. God was good. I've flown airplanes all my life. A kid from Jersey who went from standing on the corner to the flight line in a life that's no longer a secret. Now, if you know of a veteran that we should feature on A Veteran's Voice, we want you to send us a picture, a brief bio, and other highlights to Mike at KERO.com. We feature a different veteran or a different veterans event every Thursday morning right here on 23ABC. All right, let's uh, switch gears. And, uh, you know, he talked about when he was flying that high, the great view that he had yes. of the West Coast and elsewhere around oh. the world. I loved his story. Thank you for sharing that. And 